Hey guys, Brooks Woodward with Nichols Lures here, and with iCast looming large in less than a month, I thought today would be a great opportunity to take you guys through the process of coming up with new products and what that looks like in the real world. When I'm developing new products, uh, the way it starts, the way that it all begins, uh, the beginning of the process is really just going to be pretty simple. Uh, I keep a running list on a sticky note near my desk of all the ideas that I've got floating around in my head uh, for what I think a really cool new product would be. Uh, maybe that's just an improvement on a, an existing product. It can look like anything. Uh, so really, I just keep a running list of all the things that I think would be cool to make. Um, and when we've got shows coming up, so there's really two times a year that I launch new products. Uh, first and most importantly is iCast, which is coming up in less than a month. And then we also launch a couple new products at the Bassmaster Classic every year. Uh, so really, the you know while this is the start of the process, <clears throat> um, usually about six months before those shows, uh, I'll take a look at this list and I'll pick a few. Uh, sometimes I'm purposely picking a few because I know that something's trendy right now. Um, uh, when I'm looking at new, you know, what, how do I make this list? Uh, I look at the market, uh, where are there gaps? What do we need? Uh, what could Nichols do better? Um, you know, what could Nichols improve on? Typically, I like to come up with brand new ideas, uh, you know, but if we're going to take an existing product and make a Nichols version, uh, the only way that I'm interested in doing that is if I know without a doubt that we can make it better. Uh, I'm not interested in carbon copying anything. Uh, if we come out with a new product that looks like something that's already on the market, it's because I think that we've made it better in some way. Uh, and so that's how things make this list. Um, you know, I'm scanning Tackle Warehouse constantly, <clears throat> uh, kind of keeping track of the market, what's trendy right now, um, what are people catching them on in tournaments, um, and then too, you know, what are my pros telling me, what do they want? Uh, and those are all things that might make this list. Uh, and so, like I said, about six months out of those shows, uh, I'll start the process of actually selecting the few baits that we're going to be releasing at that particular show, uh, and I'll start the prototype process. Um, and so, for example, uh, at ICAST this year, uh, one of the things that we're going to be releasing is a skip and shaky head. Um, and so... Basically, the way that that, that works is uh, I'll pick a product, and then the next thing that I do is I think about where I'm going to get that bait made. Um, nine times out of ten, it's going to, well, ten times out of ten, it's going to be made here in the U.S. at several of our different vendors, depending on what material it's made out of. Um, we deal a lot in lead and brass, are, are two of our more common metals here at Nichols. Um, and we've got different vendors for different materials. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to look at is what is this item made out of? Where am I going to get it? Uh, and then I need to get in touch with that person and I need to start the prototype phase. I need to tell them what I want uh, as clearly as possible so that they can then start uh, making a prototype for me uh, to then start testing and send out to some pros and, and get feedback on. Uh, so with the skip and shaky, we know it's made out of lead and hooks. So I'm going to contact my lead vendor uh, and I'm going to describe to them exactly what they want or what I want, excuse me. Um, and they're going to basically, so some new products, there's a lot of creativity involved. Uh, for example, there's a new spoon that we're working on, the dagger spoon that some of you guys have, have seen. Uh, the name's not quite final, uh, but it's sort of a from scratch bait. There's nothing that I can really look at um, that, you know, to, to show somebody that we want it to be like that. Uh, there's other things like a shaky head that's it's really a synthesis of different components. So really, at this point, what I'm doing is I'm looking at all the different hooks on the market uh, made by all the different brands that you know, Gamakatsu, Owner, uh, Eagle Claw, Shrokar. I'm looking at all of the different hooks, uh, and I'm going to try to pick the best one for what I want. Uh, and then I'm just going to pick the other components, like the bait keeper. Uh, so really, again, I'm synthesizing all these components uh, with a lead head of our design that I think is going to be best for what we want. Uh, so with the skip and shaky, I knew that I wanted a shaky head that could skip up under docks really easily. Uh, and so I knew that I wanted a horizontal line tie. Um, I knew that as a shaky head, a lot of guys, I mean, almost everybody is going to be throwing that on uh, spinning gear. So it needs to be a relatively light wire hook. Uh, and then, you know, 
I knew that I wanted the head to be more of an arky style head um, because that's what skips the best. So it's just like a pebble uh, when you skip it over the surface. And then I also really love bait keepers that have a centering pin on them. So I chose that one to go on here. So I, I, first thing I do is I call my lead vendor and I really, you know, relay all that information to them. Uh, and they send me a prototype in a bag just like this. Um, and after I get the first prototype, we sort of uh, do a little bit of testing. Sometimes uh, they nail it on the first try. Other times, uh, we've got to go do a back and forth a few times and get new prototypes made because there's something we just don't like. Uh, for example, the first skip and shaky head prototype we got, the hook was just way too short on it. Uh, and I just, I didn't love the placement of the, the bait keeper. Uh, and so all I had to do was call up my vendor, tell him what issues I was having, uh, pick a different hook uh, that was a little bit longer shanked since the one that I had was too short, and we had a new prototype made. Um, so that's how the prototyping phase works. Sometimes with a spoon, for example, it might look like a hand cut spoon model uh, where someone at the factory is taking a piece of brass and actually hand cut and contoured that spoon to our specifications for us to test out. Um, so after the prototyping phase, we move into the mold or the dye phase where uh, it's time for me to pony up and decide that we're going to go forward with this new prototype and we've got to pay for those tooling fees so that these, these baits can be made more en masse. Uh, you know, obviously the prototype facilities don't have the capability to pump out thousands of these. They're made to do two or three for me to look at. So the next thing we need to do, like I said, is to pay for that tooling so that they can be mass produced. Uh, and once that happens, I simply place an order for my products. Again, they're all made here in the U.S., if not here in our shop. Um, and uh, we start getting them in. So ideally, uh, with ICAST coming up in about three weeks, I should have stock of all of our new products that we're going to be launching about the week before ICAST. Um, the things that you, you know, also maybe don't think of when you're coming out with new products is uh, I've got to come up with pricing. Uh, I've got to send all of that pricing to our customers. Uh, that buy from us at wholesale so that they can put them in your local tackle store. Uh, I've got to come up with any, you know, is this, gonna, is this item going to need a new package? Is it going to need to be uh, in a different kind of blister shape uh, than I'm currently carrying? Well, I've got to order that stuff, uh, and sometimes it can take a couple of months to get packaging materials in. So if I'm going to be ordering new packaging, I've got to get on that in a hurry, uh, you know, long before the show ever comes. Um, and all that stuff is kind of behind the scenes so that at ICAST, we can get there, we can set our booth up, and we can uh, kind of already have everything in place so that we're ready to present you know, the final product to you, the consumer. Uh, it's a really, that, that's probably my favorite part of the job is coming up with new baits, uh, new improvements on old ideas. Uh, anything like that is where I really uh, like to spend my time. Uh, it's just the most satisfying thing that we do. Um, and, you know, I, I hope this answered a few questions about that. It's something we get a lot. You know, how do you design a new bait? Uh, what goes into it? Uh, and it's, it's really exciting and fun. Uh, and I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Uh, and this has been the Nichols Lure Shop Drop. Uh, I'm Brooks Woodward, and we'll see you next time.